Today, I'm going to show you one of my favorite websites that I've been using for many years now in order to help me achieve financial independence. And that is, of course, the ficalc.app website. F-I-C-A-L-C dot A-P-P. Very simple. So let me show you the power of this website. So the power of this website exists in how, it can, how fast it can give you success rates for how likely you are to succeed in retirement. And this can also work for early retirement. So our inputs are gonna be right here on the left. And of course, I like to work my way from the top to bottom. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the duration. So we can click on these little help icons right here and it can explain what duration means. And basically duration in this case is how long your retirement is going to last. So that's what you can go ahead and estimate from yourself. So when you retire, how long is your lifespan going to be after that? For a duration, uh, 30 years is the default, but if you're retiring early, for example, then your duration might be much longer. If you retired at 35 and you expect to live until 85, then your duration could be 50 years. So you can see we put that input in and everything already changed automatically. Okay, but we still got a few more things to edit here. Next is our portfolio. How much are we going to retire with? So the default here is a $1 million portfolio, but you don't necessarily need $1 million if you live a frugal life. Uh, maybe you'll need more if you wanna spend more. So you can go ahead and look at the help icon right here, and it tells you how much you're gonna have and what your asset allocation will be. And you can actually edit that by clicking into this box right here. So for example, uh, with stocks, it automatically puts us at 80, 15, and then 5% cash. I don't like to account for cash as part of my portfolio. So I'll have cash, but I'm not counting that as part of my portfolio. Like I'm not withdrawing from cash. So I always put zero for cash. And then of course it says that it has to add up to 100%. So in this case, we can have more stocks or more bonds. We need to add 5% to make 100, or we can input our own. But I like a good 80-20 stock to bond split, 80% stocks and 20% bonds. I think that's very reasonable for most people. And then you can also adjust your annual fees, like if you're investing in something different besides index funds. These are the average fees for index funds that they automatically have in there. And then it doesn't matter what I put for annual growth of cash because I have a 0% allocation. So go ahead and save that. And you can see it already automatically updates. Not much has changed yet so far. And of course, that's with a $1 million portfolio. When I retired, I retired with much less than a $1 million portfolio. So I also had a lot less spending than what we're gonna see down here, but we'll keep it at 1 million for now. Just know that you can change that. All right, and then we have the withdrawal strategy. Let's take a look at this little help right here. This tells you basically, there are many different kinds of strategies that you can use when you retire, when you retire early, when you become financially independent. And then they have a few that you can choose from. So they have the constant dollar strategy where you spend the same amount adjusted upwards for inflation. And then you have the percent of portfolio strategy, which is the second most popular one. And that's where you take a certain percentage of your portfolio uh, every single year, no matter how much your portfolio is worth at that time. So that's personally the one that I'm gonna be using, but the original 4% rule, I like the original basic retirement planning uses the constant dollar strategy. So I'm gonna leave it on that for now. And then you can put how much your withdrawal rate is gonna be. So the automatic default one is $40,000, and that's because it is 4% of the starting portfolio value, which is $1 million. So this is basically following the 4% rule right here. $1 million, 4% of that is $40,000. And then you can actually click and unclick here for adjust for inflation. And they recommend that you do adjust for inflation because inflation can pretty much quickly erode your purchasing power if you don't adjust upwards for inflation. So uh, we are gonna keep that clicked, but watch what happens if I unclick adjust for inflation. You're probably gonna see the success rate go up. Yep, you're gonna go up to 100% because your $40,000 is becoming worth less and less over time you know, in this scenario when you retire. Even a modest inflation rate of 3% can quickly erode $40,000 of spending power over a few decades. So we're gonna keep that back up to adjust for inflation. And then that is the basic inputs that you can have for building your own retirement plan and you can mess around with all that when you are building it. And I constantly did that when I was planning for my early retirement. But there are a few more things that you can do on here. And you can see right here at the bottom, we have early withdrawals and we have income. So you can add any kind of early withdrawal. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. And they give you some nice examples here. Like if you're planning on buying a new car, maybe 10 years from now, you plan on buying a new car. 
or you plan on moving to a new house. And so you're going to have to take a one time, basically larger withdrawal. And of course, if you do do that, it's going to probably cut down your success rate a little bit. So let's try and do that just as an example. So let's say we need a new car and the amount that we're going to need for that new car is going to be, I don't know, let's say $20,000 just for inflation because it's a $20,000 car in today's dollars. And we're going to say that we're going to need it 10 years from after we retire. And this withdrawal is made for one year. All right, let's add that in there. And right here, you can see that our success rate went down just a little bit. I think it was like 89% and now it's at 87 and a half. So let's see if I can remove that. And it goes back up to yep, 89. So it went down by about 2%. And then um, the same thing you can do with income here. You can see that if you have any other kind of income besides your portfolio, that can help your chances of you know, having a successful retirement or early retirement. So some examples are social security, uh, rental property, pension, and all this kind of stuff. Maybe you wanna work part-time and things like that. So this is what you can do right here to add income. And I probably would highly suggest that you do at least add social security because it's very likely that you will be receiving it at some point. How much? I don't know, but you can use a social security website in order to estimate that for you. So let's say you expect a very low amount of social security because you retired early. We'll say $1,000 a month. And they do adjust annually for inflation. It's built into the law of social security. And it begins, yep, immediately after the first year. And if you retired at, let's say, 35, I think that was the example I used before, and you expect to receive social security at at least past 65. So that's gonna be at least 30 years. Full retirement age would be 67. So should be 32 years into retirement. I think that's correct. And then the income repeats indefinitely until you expire, as they say. All right, so we can go ahead and add that. So this should adjust for inflation based on what it is now. So it'll be $1,200, it'll be $12,000 of purchasing power in the future. And you can see that brought our success rate up uh, just a little bit there because um, it's 32 years into the future. So you're retired for 32 years before you start receiving that income. And that's why it didn't really affect your success rate that much. But like if you retired, let's say, I'll change it here. Let's say instead you retired and you only had 22 years until you did it. I'm guessing that's going to increase your chance of success. And there it goes. Yep. The closer you are to receiving that income, then the more it's going to increase your chance of success. And here's another example I like to add in there. Like if you do have rental properties or anything, maybe a small pension, you can add that in there. So it's important that you do include these extra withdrawals in income if it is going to be happening, if you are actually planning for that, because that can you know definitely affect your success rate. The bigger of a one-time withdrawal is going to affect your success rate, uh, probably lower it a little bit. The more income that you have coming in beyond your portfolio, then of course that's going to affect your success rate as well. So I'd highly recommend if you are planning to become financially independent, if you're planning to retire at any time in your life, that you play around with FiCalc because it's an excellent tool and it has been so helpful to me on my journey to financial independence. And now if you're serious about your retirement, then I have another video for you to watch right now, okay? It's gonna pop up right on the screen right after I get off the screen. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm Zach from oncashflow.com and I hope to see you next time.